Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Awesome Blue. Tonight I'm doing a night diving adventure. As you can see, I'm all geared up here. And what's so cool about nighttime is you get out there and all the fish and creatures are totally different than the ones you see during the day. Plus, I got this brand new dive laser beam. And this laser is the strongest laser you're allowed to buy in the United States to go underwater with. I saw a video online where this guy had a fish in his fish tank and the fish was chasing the laser beam. So cool. So I'm gonna see if I can get some fish and try to get a reaction out of them out here underwater. Okay, one more thing. So typically when I go diving, I only use like one or two dive lights at nighttime, dive torches. But this time I decided to take one of my old spear fishing floats and I converted this thing to be the ultimate night diving light array. Now you see this thing, it's just decked out with lights. Hopefully it just lights up the whole underwater and I can capture in awesome quality some great shots for you guys. By the way, if you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button. All right, let's gear up and get out there. So I often get asked from friends who don't dive at nighttime, is it cold? Like, is it really cold to dive at night? And you know, I'm wearing gloves and a neoprene wetsuit hood, but don't let that fool you at all into thinking the water's cold. Like, interestingly enough, I'd say that the water is virtually the same temperature at night as it is during the daytime in Hawaii, even when the sun's out. And in fact, sometimes when I get out of the water at nighttime, I actually feel like it's warmer in the water than it is out of the water. Probably just cause you know, you get out of the water, you're wet and maybe there's a bit of wind or something at night, but still it's actually the same temperature at night as it is during the day. This right here is a big fin reef squid. Now, people love to make calamari out of these squid. For me, this is one of my all time favorite fishing baits that I use when I go shore fishing. These guys only live, get this, to just over 300 days old and they grow up to about 14 inches. So if they only have 300 days to grow to that 14, inches they actually have one of the fastest recorded growth rates of all these creatures out here in the water Wake up, baby all the stars are shining bright yeah we should stay up so that we can look at them all night Tons of the fish that you see during the daytime, in fact, most of them actually go sleep somewhere at night. And certain types will go find like a little hole or just kind of plant themselves under a, under a little ledge or something like that. And you can see here, a few of these guys are just sleeping away. You'll even see some fish that are asleep, but they have their eyes open because they don't even have eyelids. For me, I have lots of opportunities to fish during the daytime. So unless I was in like a survival situation, I don't like to shoot sleeping fish. Some people consider it, you know, unsportsmanlike and I totally get that. And there are also types of fish that are nocturnal and they're most active or virtually only active at nighttime. And those are fish like soldier fish, squirrel fish, yellowfin goatfish, or, or red vecchi. This surgeon fish was just cruising along and I was able to place like a sweet stone shot on him with my three prong. I thought that I'd mention like the sun right now in Hawaii is setting just after 6 p.m. So it's not like we need to go night diving super late at midnight or something. You know, we can jump in and get back out by 9 or 10 p.m. and have had a great night dive. This little guy here is a small five or six inch 7-Eleven crab. And this one is a big daddy 7-Eleven crab. He was way bigger than that last one. They're called 7-Eleven crabs because they have seven large spots and four smaller spots along the back of their shell. I brought the net bag down to the crab since these guys have some serious claws. And you try to like grab them down on the bottom, take them back to the top, get them in the net bag. You know, I've had some instances where they've gotten me in the thumb or whatever. So 
not fun, not fun at all. These crabs are unregulated in Hawaii, so you can take them at any size, male or female, but one downside to 7-Eleven crabs is they yield a pretty small amount of meat compared to other types of crabs, like if they were the same size. And these crabs are not considered a delicacy like the Kona crab that we have. Lots of people don't, you know, love the flavor, the taste of them. But I've got somebody special in mind who loves these crabs. So stick around for the catch and the cook portion later in this episode. Steph was busy on testing out the laser and she found that some of the smaller fish would actually get interested in it. And they sort of look at it and follow where it went, but they wouldn't commit and like chase it down like a cat would chase a laser beam. So didn't work out this time. Maybe in the future we'll try it with crabs or squid or some other type of, you know, animal out here at nighttime to see if they go for it. I kind of think like if I came across a GT or a young GT, uh, Trevally, Jack. I think those maybe more predatory fish might chase it. Who knows? We'll have to try it again in the future. Just like if you go out at nighttime in your yard or in your garden and you look for snails, underwater at night, all the sea snails come out and just crawl across the entire reef. Now this is pretty cool guys. I've only seen this a few times ever and this prickly looking grayish, whitish skin on this cowrie shell is called its mantle. And it's like a cloak around the entire shell and it only does this at nighttime. Very, very few of them I've ever seen have this actually going on when I find them. And it literally allows the shell to sort of rebuild and reglaze and polish itself. If you've ever seen like one of these shells in person, they have like an enamel or like a resin coating. Like they're so shiny and so glassy looking. It's so cool. And this is how it does that. first night dive. It was fun. Awesome. How was the visibility? Was it what you expected? The visibility was pretty okay. There's a lot of plankton in the water. Yeah. It stirs it up a lot and obviously you can't see anything but what your flashlight's lighting up in front of you. Yeah. It's a little eerie but it was a lot of fun. Did Stephanie, did anything surprise you when we were out here? Did any animals show up or Jellyfish on my neck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that was awesome. I actually, um, I just seen some of the jellyfish and plankton up close and personal. It's super cool and a totally different experience. Right. Yeah, totally. Cool, cool. Would you do it again? Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Awesome, guys. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming out. Ginny and Steph headed into the shore, and Ricky and I decided to stay at a little while longer. I could wait another night. One more night, one more night. I could fight. That was a Spanish dancer there, so cool, aren't they? One more night, one more night. Say it's gonna be okay. We ended up getting some flash rain. Like, we were out there night diving, and all of a sudden it just starts pouring rain on us. And we were a little bit concerned that it was gonna mess up the visibility under the water, but thankfully it just sort of showed up, disappeared like a tropical rainstorm and the visibility was totally fine. I'm
So I saw lots of these brown slipper lobster on this dive. They don't have any claws and so the meat's only in the tail. And the very first time I saw one was actually during the daytime. And I thought it was some sort of sea cockroach or something. These guys are nocturnal and during the day, they're always hiding somewhere on the reef. In fact, I come across them somewhat regularly when I'm spearfishing during the daytime. I'll poke my head into like a cave looking for a fish and I'll see them just like plastered on the roof of the, uh, or in the ceiling of the cave, just sleeping away. The brown slipper lobster like these guys only get up to six inches, which is, you know, pretty small for a lobster. The scaly slipper lobster is the bigger variety that I've caught before on the reef and they can grow up to about 16 inches. The DNLR, or the you know, fishing game rules in Hawaii for all types of slipper lobster are pretty easy to follow. The tail width has to be about two and three quarter inches wide and you can't take a female that currently has eggs, but otherwise you can take the female if there's you know, no eggs on the bottom. And the season that they're closed is you know, May to August. Spiny lobsters make this really weird sound. They make like a rubber sound by taking like their joints, the soft tissue in their joints and like somehow squeaking them or rubbing them together. It's the weirdest thing ever. I'll try to crank up the sound here so you can try to hear it. The fishing game rules in Hawaii for all types of spiny lobster is that the carapace length has to be at least three and a quarter inches and you can't take any females at all. Even if they don't have eggs, you can't take females regardless. And the close season is May to August, just like the slipper lobster. And you can't spear any lobsters in Hawaii like you can. I think it's in the Caribbean, you can spear them. And you're probably wondering like, why don't you just spear them in the back of the hole there? Cause that'd be a lot easier to get them. So no, you're not allowed unfortunately, but uh, in some ways fortunately, cause you wouldn't know if it's a female necessarily if you couldn't get a good uh, look at them. All in all, I think my floating array of lights was super successful and I think it did a good job of giving me extra light when I was exploring, as well as help me like get better video footage for you guys uh, when I was closer to the float. I'm excited to, to cook up this little surgeon fish, this pualu, uh, as well as one of my subscribers suggested that I try this Cajun, Cajun's Choice Blackened Seasoning. And this suggestion came from Hurley. So thanks so much, Hurley. Uh, it's really kind of you to reach out and also kind of tell me some tips on how to cook it because uh, I've never cooked with this before and I'm excited to try. So I'm gonna get Flayne up here and let's try it out. One more thing today is I'm trying these really cool stormproof matches. And if you guys haven't heard of these before, the best way to describe them is they're like mini flares. Like literally every one of these uh, match sticks is like a little flare. And what's so cool about it is that they're totally waterproof. So if you're out hiking or camping and you don't know if it's gonna be pouring rain or you're gonna be near the ocean like I am and you wanna make sure like your match is definitely gonna light, take a look at this little demo I'm gonna give you.
This looks so good, guys. It's totally blackening up, getting really crisp. All right, guys, this is totally done. This fish looks super good. I bet you it's super hot right now, but uh, I'm just gonna give it a few seconds to cool down. Like when I bit down on that piece of fish, it totally crunched when I bit into it. And that's perfect for, you know, a blackened fish like this. This is exactly what I'd sort of expect from a restaurant or something, you know, this is great. It's, the spice has a, um, a kick to it. Like it's a little bit spicy for sure. And I thought maybe that the caramelization or the blackening was gonna be, you know, created by some sugar in the, in the spice as well. But I was reading the ingredients, there's no sugar in it. So, you know, it's just all those blackened seasoning spices that really give it that crispiness as well as the oil. I think the oil helps um, give it that really crispy side. So really good. I love this spice. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to Amazon where you guys can get the spice. Thanks, Hurley, for suggesting it. Really good suggestion. I uh, was excited to try it and sure enough, totally paid off. Thanks for that. This concludes part one of the Catch and Cook. I have a bonus Catch and Cook number two coming right up. Let's do it. We rescued a Louisiana Catahoula leopard dog about seven years ago, and he's almost 13 years old now. His name is Oakley, and he sleeps all day. Like, he goes to the vet pretty regularly as well to get arthritis treatment, but he's always excited when I bring home fish. And tonight's his lucky night because he's getting some 7-Eleven crab drenched in his favorite, you guessed it, butter. 7-Eleven crab isn't really a delicacy, like I said, but he has no idea about that. He loves it just the same. If you guys have made it this far, thank you so much for watching another episode of Awesome Blue. I'll see you on the next one. Watch a video, let's play Chanel on this awesome